Alexa, why do people move to Florida? According to an Alexa Answers contributor, it's likely due to the warm weather and the lack of income tax. She's right. The weather is awesome here all year round. And we don't pay any state income taxes. In fact, that's the reason a lot of companies are moving to Florida too. Hi, so if you're new to my channel, my name is Jane Chabro, and the purpose of this video is to enlighten you on both the pros and the cons of moving to Florida. I moved to Florida years ago unprepared with no knowledge of the state, and I learned new things day to day. So I wanna share some things I've learned with you so you don't have to learn the hard way too. You probably heard that Florida is for old people. You know, God's waiting room? Wrong. The people that said that probably just selected the wrong town. Now as a realtor, I'm not allowed to select an area for you, but you can do your own research. First, I recommend you uh, looking at the crime map. So Google crime map and then the city name and rule out the areas that have high crimes. And also rule out sexual predators. If you have children, go to the Florida uh, sex offender registry and rule out any uh, sex offenders in a neighborhood that you're interested in. And after you take these steps, you're going to find yourself well-planned and ready for a happy time in Florida. So the truth is Florida is for people of all ages to enjoy. The weather is gorgeous all year round and there's so much activities going on here. It just It's just nonstop. You just have to select the right town that matches your personality. This was the first thing I loved about Florida. Where's the smog? If you move to Florida, you're going to have to say goodbye to potholes. We don't have them here because we don't have sand and salt trucks running through because it doesn't snow here. Since most Florida restaurants have outdoor seating, they welcome your furry little friends. Before we get into the good stuff, a sister got to eat. So click that subscribe button and the bell and Lola might not come after you. Many people move to Florida believing that all parts of Florida are the same. Then they have to move again when they realize that they chose a community or city that didn't really match their desired lifestyle. This guide is designed to give you a little more clarity on that so you can get it right the first time. A lot of people ask, do they stock the lakes? And the answer is no. They don't need to because the lakes populate themselves. All waterways in Florida are connected. So you're going to find humongous fish and turtles, you name it. And also, I don't think you need a fishing license to fish in most places in Florida. I have never seen anyone with a fishing license. They just drop their line in anywhere. 80 degree temperatures during the holidays? What? <laughs> so how do you know if you want to live on the East Coast or the West Coast of Florida? Hmm. The east coast of Florida is great for surfers that want active ocean waves and vibrant, festive communities. Because of the active ocean waves giving a constant breeze on the east coast, it doesn't get as hot as the west coast. And definitely not as hot as central Florida with hardly any breezes at all. The west coast of Florida is on the Gulf of Mexico and the beaches are beautiful with white sand, but the water is very calm with little or no waves at all. You can actually walk out far into the water on the West Coast, kind of like walking through bath water or a huge puddle. <laughs> you could really get spoiled here being served poolside at the resorts and spas. So you'll probably see an occasional alligator. This is Gladys. Every day I would go to the walk bridge and throw like bread out to the fish. And the fish would expect me every day at the walk bridge at five o'clock and one day I threw my tortilla in and this is Gladys she took it and the fish were disappointed one fish went up to her and said that's our bread and then looked at her face and said well oh my god no you can have that bread that's a face only a mother could love so Gladys is going away and then who comes up to her? A turtle. 
here comes the turtle. And he's like, nope, that's our bread, not yours. And he rips it out of her mouth. Can you believe that? Yikes. Did you see that? You have to look close to see it. And the turtle's wanting more now. Look, he's going after the alligator. <laughs> oh, my gosh. So anyway, you don't want to keep your children or small dogs near the water. Even this young one, I've seen her take ducks down before. And But nobody called the trapper on her because she's young and they didn't see her as a threat. But then once they get older, you know, people call the trappers and they come and take them. And don't let the trappers lie to you and say, yeah, we're sending them off to a farm because that's what they'll tell you. The truth is they kill them because um, they say they have to make a living and the state only pays them $35 per alligator that they capture. So they have to sell the alligator meat to make the rest of their living to cover their expenses of gas and everything. I don't know. I, I think it's not right that they lie to people. One thrust of that powerful tail will catapult him five feet onto land. But I don't want to scare you. It's a very rare thing to have an alligator attack people. They will go after ducks and birds and other fish. Alligators only eat once a week, they say, but you don't know what day of the week it is. <laughs> so keep your dogs and your children away from the water because they actually watch their prey before they attack and with only their eyes above the water. So you won't see them. So this is an adult alligator. He lost his stripes like you saw Gladys had stripes. Oh, the reason I named her Gladys was because she's a very nosy neighbor like the nosy neighbor on that old TV sitcom, Bewitched. <laughs> you might see alligators just sunbathing on the grass. And, you know, keep your distance, though, because you never know what day of the week it is. So if you shine a flashlight on a dark lake and you see eyes light up, that's how you know you have alligators. But don't worry, that's a very rare sighting. I think I've only seen, like, three alligators since I've been here, <laughs> including Gladys. How close to the beach do you want to live? How nice to be able to walk from your front door right to the beach, right? <laughs> but keep in mind that homeowners insurance premiums and condo HOA fees are very high if you live within a few miles of the beach. Some people pay $25,000 or more just for basic coverage because they bought a home close to the beach. So driving 10 minutes or more to the beach may save you tens of thousands yearly. Get homeowner insurance quotes before your home inspection period on your purchase contract expires. During the home inspection days specified in your home purchase contract, you may withdraw your offer with no questions asked. But after that period ends, you might risk losing your deposit on the home if you change your mind after pricing insurance. Communities with security gates. Do you want a manned security gate or an electronic gate or no gate at all? Private gated communities have both pros and cons. Some pros are higher safety, less traffic inside your subdivision, and the cons are higher HOA fees because of having the gate. And your guests will typically be detained having to show ID to security to gain entrance with each time they visit. I was also told that under some conditions, once a community puts up a gate, the community is now responsible to pay the bills for having the roads repaved and things like that. I didn't confirm that, but that's what I was told by one community that didn't have a gate and they said that was the reason why. So if you choose no security gate, you can always install your own security cameras and a fence with a gate around your home if the HOA has no rules against gates on your property. I actually preferred my own cameras because I like that I got an instant alert on my cell phone no matter where I was whenever somebody was at my door or any activity around my house. Private pool or community pool or no pool? Hmm. Pros and cons. Private pool maintenance service costs about $100 per month. And running the pool pump could add an extra $50 to $100 to your electric bill monthly. But it can also be very enjoyable to have your own pool where you can serve food, entertain, have your pets with you, have no pool curfew, or just relax in privacy without people watching you. 
Community pools are maintained by your HOA, so you never have to do any pool work or hire a pool service. The fees are added into your HOA monthly and are probably lower than having a private pool. Some have rules of no food or pets by the pool and the pool typically closes at dusk. Sharing a pool means you have to hope people are clean, considerate, and not too noisy. HOA or no HOA. Some people prefer homes with no HOA governing what they can and can't do with their own property. And some actually like the HOA to keep the neighborhood uniform by ruling which exterior paint colors are allowed on homes, which types of fences, if any, and whether or not RVs or trucks with wheels over 22 inches are allowed to be parked in any driveways, whether you may change your landscaping by planting or removing a tree, or if you can paint your driveway or mailbox, you have to get permission first. Each HOA has a different set of rules. Most HOAs rule whether or not you may rent your property out or not. And if so, what the minimum term is. Anywhere from one day to six months to one year minimum term. Some state that you must own for a year or two before you may rent it out. They believe that having a higher ratio of owners to renters keeps the value up in the community. Be sure to know the HOA rules before entering a purchase contract. Most HOAs have websites where you can review all of their rules and covenants these days. Lately, I've seen HOAs that demand you have a FICO score of 650 or higher before you can purchase a home in their community. They want to make sure that you're not a high risk for paying your HOA fees. Of course, they can always foreclose on owners that don't pay, but they don't want to risk having to pay court fees and attorney fees. And in some cases, HOAs don't even take non-paying owners to court. Instead, they just raise the HOA fees where all the other homeowners have to pick up the slack. Not fair. And some HOAs run a thorough background check on all residents moving in and of course, they're gonna charge you for the fee. And also, they rule how many pets you're allowed to have, if any, what dog breeds are allowed, what their maximum weight can be, so many restrictions. But HOA homes are less costly to purchase in most cases too. So people that are against having an HOA sometimes have no choice if their purchasing budget leads them there. Unfortunately, there are crooked HOAs simply because they can be, so you, really have to know what you're getting for your monthly HOA fees and make sure they have enough money in, in reserves to cover community expenses that are gonna occur next year. Some properties in Florida are unincorporated and this means you don't have to pay city taxes, you only pay the county taxes. These communities sometimes have their own fire department and are served by the county sheriff's office if needed instead of city police officers and a city fire department. But the children are welcome in city schools. Many times these properties are on large lots, one and a quarter acre or larger, and you're allowed to have horses, pigs, chickens, goats, you name it. <laughs> if you own an unincorporated home, you're typically exempt to have to get a city permit for home renovations. However, you will need to get a county permit. There's so many golf communities that you can live in, but they're all different from each other. So ask me which ones will match your personality, what you're looking for. Like for instance, some have um, amenities for kids and some do not. Some have expensive buy-in, some have mandatory social memberships. There's so many different things. So just uh, shoot me an email if you want to know which ones are best for your particular lifestyle. Do you like beachfront living? If you do, there's still so many choices to choose from. Do you like high rises, low rises, mid rises, concierge, valet parking? There's so many choices. So let me know what your preferences are and maybe I can match you up with a good one. Even in the most vibrant cities, the communities are tucked away. So you get the best of both worlds. You get a quiet lake community to live in 
And yet you're only one minute from all the nightlife, the restaurants, the nightclubs, the shopping, everything. If you don't like heavy traffic, just stay out of Orlando. <laughs> so anyway, if you drive a motorcycle, you don't need a helmet here, which I'm not too thrilled with, but that's the rules. And also you want to carry extra uninsured motorist coverage as a driver in Florida because other drivers are not required to carry insurance to cover your medical bills if they should hit you. There's a lot of 55 plus communities that like to keep seniors active with a full event calendar and things like that. Some require that one person is 55 or older and some require that all are 55 or older that live there. There's pros and cons. Um, if you go to sell a 55 plus unit that you own, you're going to get less showing traffic because most buyers are 35 to 45 on average. But if you're buying in a 55 plus community, you're going to have less offers coming in behind you. So you might get a better price. So it works both ways. Never assume all communities are the same. Some have a clubhouse, some do not. Some come with mandatory golf or social membership fees. Some require you to buy equity into the golf course. Some have a place for you to park your boat. Some have strict regulations and some do not. Some have more amenities and activities for children with their own separate clubhouse. And some will leave your kids or grandkids disappointed because they cater mostly to the adults. Some areas have dog beaches and parks for dog lovers and some do not. So there's many lakefront and canal front properties for those who enjoy fishing from their backyard or exotic bird watching. Birds like to come to the canals and lakes and fish themselves. So we often get beautiful three foot, four foot tall birds that come and fish in our yards that have lakes and canals. Spoonbills, blue herons, storks, cranes, etc. <laughs> we have lots of rustic farm communities of homes and land that have no HOA rules and you can just about have any type of animal you want. The only rules are the county rules on unincorporated property. So for example, you might not need a city permit for certain home renovations, but you definitely need a county permit. Some homes have mega shopping malls, supermarkets, restaurants close to home. Some communities have everything walkable and you can leave your car at home and others you have to drive to. Florida brings you the most beautiful birds, including the spoonbill you see here in my backyard. <laughs> also blue heron, cranes, storks, egrets, and so much more. So if you live lakefront or on a canal, you're gonna see even more, but they're everywhere. I even saw uh, an egret on top of someone's car hitching a ride once, it was hilarious. Iguanas are common to see near canals and lakes too. They can grow to big four foot long creatures, but they don't hurt people or animals. They're vegetarians and they eat leaves and flowers. And unfortunately, if they find a bird's nest, they will eat the eggs too. So they're typically bright green with stripes. If you ever see a orange iguana, that means it's mating season because they change colors during mating season. I once had a rare black panther come into my yard chasing three squirrels and I yelled, get out of here. <laughs> and this strong and giant cat from the lion family actually ran away when I yelled to my surprise <laughs> and the squirrels got to live. However, a few months later, I tried the same tactic when a coyote came in my yard, but he just looked at me like a New Yorker and said, yeah, and <laughs> so yeah, there's also bobcats that target squirrels. They hide up in the trees, so you might not even notice them. Um, you're also going to see tiny lizards everywhere, so just keep your doors closed so they don't come in your home. They're cute and harmless, but they're pesky too. I actually had one in my bed once. I lifted up the comforter and saw a lizard, and I realized I left the sliders open in my bedroom, and I was like, oh, no, that was not a pretty sight to see. <laughs> 
it's not uncommon to see snakes in Florida since just about every Florida subdivision has water somewhere. Most of the time they're harmless corn snakes or rat snakes, but on occasion you might find a venomous snake. So it's good to know your snake breeds before moving here. There are rats in Florida, but unlike up north, they don't typically go inside homes or buildings. Since it's warm all year round, they just live in the bushes on the main roads. So you may see one scurrying down the street, but probably not inside your home. After you live in Florida for a year or two, you just get used to the wildlife and it doesn't phase you much. Raccoons are here too, but no different than up north. Now bears, I don't miss them. They were in New Jersey where I'm originally from, <laughs> but they're not in our part of Florida to my knowledge, the Palm Beaches, but possibly in other parts of Florida. I believe Orlando had some bear sightings. Coming to Florida years ago, nobody ever told me that these roaches come out of your sink drains and your bathtub drains. So I get up in the middle of the night, I look at my sink and here comes this big roach trying to squeeze through the drain. And I'm like, no, go back down. <laughs> but now, you know, so when you move to Florida, just make sure you keep your drains closed. And if you have a pool on the patio and there's drainage around the pool, they can come out of there too. So you try and keep your patio doors closed whenever possible. Remember what this toad looks like, because this is a poisonous bufo toad that could send your dog to the animal hospital. They are in the grass, they're in the street, they're everywhere. So when you walk your dog at night, be sure to bring a flashlight because you don't want your dog licking one of these guys. The average vet claims they get about 150 emergency cases per year where they have to save a dog's life. Most of the time they can save them, but sometimes the venom damages their central nervous system so bad that they can't save them. Are those your babies? It's so cool. The mommy and daddy watch the babies graze. Another type of community is a pud community where you don't even need a car because everything is at your fingertips. So the townhouses are behind this shopping strip and you can't see it, but there's a big supermarket Publix on the left and then there's banks to the right. You don't even need a car to live here. You could just walk to everything. When there's a major nor'easter snowstorm up north, this is what we get. We're having a nor'easter. See all the trees moving? It's, I think it's 70 degrees with a lot of breezes going on. And yo, <laughs> that's what a nor'easter looks like in Florida. <laughs> you hear the wind? Look at those trees moving. And the pool has a little dust on top. It's terrible. If you like fruit, you're gonna love Florida. Our last house had two avocado trees. We were never out of guacamole. And a mango tree and a banana tree. Did I tip you off on enough things to make it worth your time? I hope so, because I got so much more coming I don't want you to miss. So be sure to subscribe and click that bell and we'll talk soon. Let me know if you have any questions about any Florida living communities or moving to Florida in general. Um, my email is realterrific at gmail.com and you have my cell number right there. You can text me. Thanks a lot. We'll talk soon. Bye.